Hello, first of all, I'd like to thank the AGO for giving me the opportunity to introduce you to our paper about TAD born expansion in aligner cases. In most of the cases with a crossbite, we need some maxillary expansion. The conventional approach is a tooth born RME followed by the aligner treatment. However, we do see some disadvantages in this two phrase protocol. Due to a long time needed for retention, the overall treatment time will be quite long. Additionally, we need some amount of overcorrection. As an alternative, some clinicians are using aligners to expand the upper arch. However, the efficacy of aligners is quite limited if it comes to a desired bodily expansion. The teeth are primarily tipping buccally. As a third alternative, mini implants can be employed for maxillary arch expansion. In 2008, we have published the worldwide first paper about mini implant assisted RME using the hybrid Hyrex. In the first study about MARP, published in 2010, we found that there is a tendency of more skeletal and less dental tipping. In the following years, numerous papers were published about the hybrid Hyrex approach, also in combination with early class 3 treatment. Nowadays, many colleagues worldwide are following our ideas and have published quite a number of papers about the mini implant assisted RME called MAPI. The conventional hybrid hyrax, as you can see right here, is connected to molar bands, which are used especially if class 3 traction is needed. However, in an aligner treatment, we do, don't want to place bands on the molars, since we are looking for free molar movements. For this reason, we are using the so-called BMX expander that is fixed just on two mini implants in the anterior palate. Björn Ludwig and Bruno Di Leonardo have designed a similar appliance called Brölex. So let's come to the case that is presented in this paper. A 13-year-old female patient with a bilateral crossbite showed up in my office asking for a line of treatment. The patient had a mild skeletal class 3. The treatment started with insertion of two mini implants in the T-zone of the palate, where the most available bone can be found. Subsequently, the distance between the two mini implants was measured and the appropriate BMX expander was chosen. By pre-activation of the expander screw, the BMX expander can be adapted to, exact, to the exact distance between the two mini implants. The activation protocol was one quarter turn per day. Using skeletal anchorage, we can go for a slow expansion, since there is no risk of unwanted tooth movements. After four weeks, the maxillary arch was sufficiently expanded and the crossbite was corrected. In the before and after RME superposition, a bodily expansion without tipping of teeth is obvious. In phase two of the treatment, aligners were used for tooth alignment. During the aligner treatment, the BMX expander stayed in place as a skeletal retainer. The BMX expander was exchanged with a banner plate for comfort reasons. The whole aligner treatment took 10 months. Here you can see the result at the end of the treatment and the occlusal settling in the retention phase. How can we improve this procedure in the future? By using insertion guides, the optimal insertion site, angulation, distance between the two mini implants can be set beforehand. And Question at the end of my talk, are aligners the future of orthodontics? 
I think they are. But for bodily movements, like in the shown case for expansion, additional tools seem to be mandatory. This is also true for desired bodily distalization, space closure, etc. If you are interested to see more, I recommend our university website or to contact me via email. At the end, I'd like to thank you for your kind attention and the AJO for giving me the opportunity to share our strategies how to overcome aligner limitations. Thank you and goodbye.